Um, and basically what they're doing is giving you points for incorporating these features. And if you get a certain number of points, you can attain this, you know, a few levels of certification for the building. Hi, Greg. How are you? Hey, Vic. How's it going? Good. I'm super excited to talk to you today about energy. You just got your well um, certification and now are an accredited professional. Can you talk a little bit about that? What does that mean? Yeah, sure. Um, so the well building uh, system is a, a rating system for buildings. Uh, it basically assigns different credits for uh, different features that you can incorporate into your building design. Um, the features span, you know, architectural, some MEP systems, um, some acoustic systems. Um, and basically what they're doing is giving you points for incorporating these features. And if you get a certain number of points, you can attain this, you know, a few levels of certification for the building. Um, yeah. And then, you know, obviously, of course, those features have different uh, different requirements and different levels of, uh, of, of certification. But, um, but yeah, that's basically it in a nutshell. Why did you decide to get accredited? Well, uh, you know, one of the things is that I, I think this is going to be a big um, a big issue coming up in new buildings. Uh, you know, we've seen LEED has gotten super popular in the last, you know, maybe decade or so. Um, and, you know, now that there's been kind of an increasing focus on on occupant health in the buildings, um, I, I really see the standard kind of taking off. And, you know, that and, you know, we're expected as, as our clients uh, expect us to be kind of experts in this um, in this field. So demonstrating that knowledge uh, to me was was important. Yeah, that sounds, that makes a lot of sense. I feel like you've seen it in the media too, you know, just this push for well buildings, kind of building off what you said. Um, like even the Super Bowl, one of the biggest commercials or commercial spaces during the year had a commercial that featured celebrities like J-Lo, Lady Gaga, Michael B. Jordan, Robert De Niro, all talking about getting well certified. Why do you think there's this push and like why right now? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I actually I double took when I saw that commercial as well. I was like, wow, that's uh not what I expected from a Super Bowl commercial. But <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, you know, the last couple of years I, I think we've seen some some increased focus on on these features in buildings, you know, specifically with, you know, from the MEP standpoint, um, you know, providing better indoor air quality and um, you know, better circadian lighting systems and things like that. But I think, you know, with the current environment and, and COVID and everything, it just seemed like the right time to start to push the uh, push the rating system a lot, a lot more. Um, you know, I think there's a big focus now on companies uh, making it clear to their employees that they can, um, you know, implement these features to make the return to work better. Um, yeah, so I, I think it just, it was a matter of timing and, you know, with the pandemic going on, it, it really worked out. So COVID was almost way. like a catalyst. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. For it in a way. Mm -hmm. What do you think is is something that people should know about well buildings that they might not know? Yeah, uh, so I mean, one of the things definitely as you're kind of reading through some of the requirements and and thinking about what it would take to implement them in the building is, uh, you know, a lot of them are not requirements that are are super you know expensive or difficult to implement, um, especially if done early on. Um, so I think that's that's the biggest thing to to know. If you want to minimize, if you want to incorporate these features and minimize, you know, cost and, and impact to the design, your best bet is to do it early. Um, you know, the earlier you start to consider these features, the better. Is there any examples that you can think of of like a low cost uh, solution? Um, well, I mean, so low cost off the top of my head, nothing really comes to mind. But as far as you know, working early in the design process, you know, for instance, one of the or a couple of the features actually uh, revolve around stairs, right? Um, okay. You know, obviously, a feature that every building's going to have to have anyway, and not exactly MEP related. Um, but you know, a couple of the features revolve around like locations of the stairs and how accessible they are to, to you know employees and occupants of the building. Of course, to you know, incentivize exercise and make it easier to, you know, to just passively get that exercise. Um, but that's the kind of thing that if you kind of keep it in the back of your mind when you're designing the building from a start, in this in this case, a new building or even a renovation for that matter, um, if you're designing it from the start, it's easy to keep it in mind. Whereas if you're if you now have to go back and, and reprogram and move around, you know, a staircase, for instance, just to, to find that optimal placement, it, you know, of course, it's a much bigger lift later on. And, it, you know, that'll have trickle down effects. Um, as far as, you know, some of the more common 
features that we would work with in the MEP uh, side. Um, of course, increasing, you know, providing better air filtration, um, you know, which we are getting a ton of, uh, of interest in um, from a lot of our clients currently. Um, that's also one of the requirements. Interesting. So through your learning, was there anything that just really stood out to you as surprising or shocking or anything that you've kind of done differently because of what you've learned? Yeah, actually, so um, after going through all of the kind of air filtration and air quality measures and everything, I actually started to wonder, like, oh, I wonder what um, I wonder how how good the air quality is in my own home. Um, so I actually went out and, and um, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with this, but the you know, the sensors that we provide for uh, some of our clients to monitor their spaces for them are made by a company called Aware. Um, and they they actually also make a, a kind of a consumer grade and, you know, home grade sensor system. Um, so I actually, I actually purchased one for myself just to try to keep an eye on my own air quality and, in, in, you know, in my house. And um, so far, it's been cool to kind of see, see how the trends and see, you know, when you're cooking something, you can see how the air quality changes and it, it's really cool. And of course, have I went you, out and bought an air purifier for, <laughs> to address it, but, you know. I was going to say, have you have you made any changes based on, on the UAR sensor? You got an air purifier, anything? Sure. Bought an air purifier anything. and tried to keep windows open more. <laughs> That's actually been one thing that as we've talked about dilution ventilation and some of those kind of things, I feel like I always have windows open now, just especially being in Brooklyn, the the air quality in the in the apartment I can't imagine is the best with three of us staying here. Um, do you notice spikes when you have more people in there or like what what have you noticed spikes it or? Yeah, one of the big things you'll notice is cooking. You'll see, you know, spike in in particulate in in cooking. Um, the 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 closest window I have to the sensor is actually not uh, directed toward the street, so I can't say I've noticed any difference in like you know rush hour or anything like that. Um, but I I notice the biggest difference when cooking. Cooking, and if you leave the door closed um, in that particular room long enough, you can see like the CO two levels start uh, start to spike. Um, it's just how many do you to have in how many one. different rooms? Oh, okay. Yeah, just so one. it's just in one room in and one room. it measures the the whole house. Uh, well, I mean, no, it only measures what what it can in that room. So it's you know a, probably a little bit more general. Um, I, I don't think the coverage on the sensor is uh, is quite as big as the the commercial ones. But even the commercial ones, you generally put them in open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were just talking about a project, and I think they had to install fifteen or something. In the whole building um so so besides buying air purifiers and monitoring the aware sensor in your home what else is is next for you well uh, you know i think um the next thing is really to start trying to incorporate this into projects you know existing projects or new projects that come in and really trying to make clients aware of, of these options that exist um, you know, it may not be right for every project of course but it's um it's certainly something worth evaluating um especially in your, your office projects and um, and anything where, where that might be appealing to a company. In the city, do you feel like there, there's plenty of opportunity? Definitely, yeah. Um, you know, of course, every company right now is, is looking into their kind of return to work plans. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's going to be a huge driver to, you know, where we see incorporation of some of these features. Um, and, and frankly, even if you're not looking to achieve the rating um, for, for your space, even incorporation of some of these features can be a good thing, you know, to market to your employees, yeah. to, um, you know, to make it very clear to them that you do care about their their health and and that they're comfortable in their own work environment. Okay, well, thank you. This has been this has been awesome. Really appreciate the insights on energy and well and IEQ. Um, do you have any anything else that you wanna that you wanna add? Uh, no, really, the only thing is, you know, of course, if uh, for anybody who's interested in, you know, incorporating some of these features into a building, definitely, you know, reach out to us and we'd be happy to kind of help you through and evaluate what, um, you know, what we can do to help you out. Thanks. Would you mind just giving your contact information? Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Greg Kaminsky. Uh, my email is gkaminsky at wbengineering.com. Um, but social media might be a better option. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, Greg. Yep. My pleasure.